Let's take a look at how to build a custom view select component using Tailwind CSS view and of course JavaScript. So I want to build this component, which basically is a better looking select element compared to the traditional select elements that a default browser will give you. You will notice that the typical select element does not have very good looking individual dropdown options. And so that might be a good reason for why you might want to build a custom select component that allows you to customize the individual options that you see here. And as we select a particular value, you see that we can add additional elements such as a check mark as well. Each of these individual values can be customized so that it has images, links, or whatever else you might think of. And the same goes for these as well. I can add an image to the left. So the last thing with this is that it's also very responsive. So if the element happened to be positioned all the way down here and we were to open up the options menu, see that the component is smart enough to position the options menu above the component rather than below the component and therefore preventing a potential cutoff of these selectable values. So let's take a look at how this is built. Basically, we're going to start off with the structure for this view custom select component by having two elements. The first is going to be the primary user interface that allows the user to see what they have selected and as well as to open up the drop down select options menu. And the other one is going to be the option menu itself. And the key thing to note here is that you'll see these ref attributes. These will basically be our glue in a JavaScript so that we can interact with the elements. Also with the help of the structure for the overall component, we'll also be able to modify the presentation of each of these elements within CSS. In addition for the user interface and a drop-down menu, there's going to be a dynamic class to allow us to indicate to the user that the component currently has focus. In addition, for the drop down menu, when focus is not enabled, we can go ahead and hide the options menu. So I'm going to start with the options menu and say that if the list of items within the options menu is none, then I'm just going to display an empty list item. And then just for uniformity's sake, I'll go ahead and say that if the user clicks this empty, then we'll just go ahead and pass in an empty object. And then what I'll do is loop through the list of menu option items. And for each one, I will go ahead and specify a key to satisfy view so that it doesn't complain. And then as each menu item is clicked on, then we'll go ahead and call this function that takes care of taking this value and setting it to the currently selected value. And then I'll follow up by displaying the actual menu option item by displaying either its title, its name, its value, or if this doesn't happen to be an object, I'll just go ahead and display the scalar value that it happens to be. And that could be either a Boolean value, a string, or a number. And I'm taking care to make sure that I wrap this around a slot so that parent component, they can go ahead and dictate how they would like to have the option menu items to actually appear. And to close off the section, what I want to do is say that I want to display a check mark next to each menu option item if in fact this particular menu option items value is within our list of selected value if so then we'll go ahead and display this check mark that's wrapped around a span element and then within the user interface i'm going to then create a, a div element that's going to wrap around a button and a list of values that i'm that the user has now selected so i'll have an area for the list of selected values and as well as a area for the button to actually trigger the drop down menu to appear or close. And so for the area for the button, I'm making sure to say that when the user clicks on the button to actually open up the drop down menu, I go ahead and set the focus for the component to true and then just display a nice SVG to indicate that nice visual element to the user. Within the region where the user is able to see that they have selected some values, I'm also going to provide a text box so that they can type to filter out the values. So here I'll store what the user is typing and as well if the user clicks on this input box, I'll go ahead and set the component to having focus to be true. And I'll use this event to track what the user is typing. Now I'm going to loop through all the values that the user has selected. And I'll provide a way for the parent to monitor whether each individual selected value has been double clicked or not. Now I'll create a span that's going to be customizable from the parent side. And here I'm going to output the actual value that the user has selected. I'll first return the option objects and then display the title or name, or if the option object is actually a string or number or, or Boolean value, I'll just go ahead and display that scalar flat value to the user. And then lastly, I'll provide a button that's gonna be red 
that allows the user to remove an option that they previously selected. And so now it's time to jump into the logic. Within our script, we're going to first define our model value. This is going to be used for V modeling. And so from our parent component, we can go ahead and say V model, whatever variable that's going to be storing the value user has selected. Additional props that we're going to store are going to be these two. But for this particular video, we're not going to discuss this one. And then there's going to be a property value for options so we can further customize the behavior of the view select component. And of course, we're going to have a property that's going to enumerate all the possible options for the view select components. And this is going to be typically an array. And if the user does not provide one, we'll go ahead and use an asynchronous function to create an empty array. Next, I'll create a variable called D. And this variable is going to be storing what the user is V modeling here. And the definition for this composable function is defined in a different video and also on my website. And next I'll create this computer property that checks to see if D is an array or not. This is going to be critical because it's going to allow us to V model multiple values or a single value. And we'll see that here in just a moment. And of course, you notice we're using view three. And so we're using the setup function to be able to handle all the logic and functionality that we're implementing rather than using views options API. Now, because a dropdown options can be an array of objects, I'm taking care to make sure I know which key within the options object the user wants to store upon clicking an options item. And so I'm storing that here. And if one is not provided, we'll assume a value. And like I mentioned earlier, the ref attributes within each element is a way for us to connect the HTML elements with the JavaScript handle to that element. So that's what these are providing. In essence, this will point to this HTML element within JavaScript. So when a user clicks a text box or clicks on the, we'll go ahead and set focus to true. And if the value that was passing is true, we'll go ahead and grab a reference to the input box and automatically set the cursor to it, indicating that it has focus. And then we'll use a timeout and pass it a function that will then get the dropdown menu itself and return the sizing position for that drop down menu and store it within this variable. And then we'll calculate how far from the bottom of the drop down menu is it compared to the overall window's height. And if that offset distance is greater than a certain amount or basically less than 30 pixels, then I want to go ahead and reposition the drop down menu above the custom view select component. And then finally, within this timeout, I will then set the variable has focus to whatever value that was passing originally. And lastly, we're gonna set this timeout to be 120 milliseconds from now. And if the value is false, we'll go ahead and again, pass the value to be the new value here. At the same time, if the value is false, we'll go ahead and clear the style property for the bottom of the dropdown menu to be clear or empty. So it resets and defaults the dropdown menu to be below the custom view select components. Next, I use another view composable function that's called click outside listener that checks to see if the user has clicked outside of our root component. And if that has happened, we'll go ahead and call set focus to be false. And I have a video on this on my channel. Now again, because the drop down option item values could be an object, I want a way to pass this computer property an options object and then have it return the actual value that the user is possibly modeling and then return it back to the user. Also at the same time, I want a way to pass in the value that is being modeled and return the original object that contains that V modeled value. So to do that, I'll create a couple of local variables and then I'll loop through the set of option values and then use the prior function I just defined here to be able to return the actual value stored within this option. And if the two are equal, then I can return the overall object item itself. Or if none is found, I'll go ahead and return a default empty object. So next we'll define the behavior of what happens when an individual option item is actually clicked on. And we're accomplishing that with this function. And the first thing it does is set focus to false. Then it retrieves the underlying value of the option item and stores it within this variable. And then depending on whether we're V modeling an array, we'll add the retrieved value into the array if it doesn't already exist, or we'll just set our D variable to the newly retrieved value. And as a courtesy, we'll tell the parent that click option has occurred for this particular option item. 
Next, we create a computer property that checks to see if the value that the user has previously selected matches an option item. And this is used for rendering the check mark next to each option item's value so as to give it a visual indicator. And we do that by returning a new function within this computed property that first extracts the value from the option. And then based on whether or not we're vmodeling an array or a scalar, we'll check to see if this extracted value is included. And if it is, we return true or false. And now I'm going to define what happens when the user presses down on their keyboard. Essentially, I just want to implement the behavior whereby if the text box is clear and the user presses the backspace or delete key, we'll go ahead and clear what the user has typed. This next computer property is a way to unify the rendering of the list of selected values so that it's always presented in the HTML as an array rather than having an if statement within our structure. So again, we're using this handy variable that checks to see if what we're vmodeling is an array. And if it's an array, then we just return the array value that it is by default. And if it's not an array, we force there to be an array and then return the value back. I'll also define a counterway to deselect variables. So whenever the user clicks on the remove button, we'll then go ahead and implement this logic that says, again, is this an array or not? And if so, we'll find the index of what the value is, and then we'll remove it from the array. But if it's not an array, then we'll just simply say the value to be clear. At the same time, we'll go ahead and give a courtesy event alert that says something has been removed so the parent can act accordingly if they need to. And lastly, because we are using the setup function, we need to go ahead and return all those functions, objects, data variables that we just defined back to view so they can be accessible within our HTML template. And so that's how I create a custom view select component or a combo box within view. Check out the link below if you'd like to get a copy of this code available on my website. Until then, I'm Solus Code.